The all new IQ Link ecosystem for Corsair finally removes all the cable clutter from your PC. IQ Link components synchronize RGB lighting and settings between connected devices with a single wire, creating a chain of devices on a single port via the Link Hub. Take control of your system and ditch the clutter by following the sponsored link in the description below. Okay, so what we have right here is a crated up uh, Origin PC Hydro X uh, computer. So we're gonna be unboxing this, kind of taking a look at it. I'm curious as to What's different with this one, to be honest, because there's only so many different ways you can build a Hydro X cooled computer utilizing all of the different Corsair cases that are available. Um, but also too, this is gonna be an important one for me because I'm really curious to see how this PC looks and feels and the build quality and all of that because I'm sure many of you have probably seen Steve's video at Gamers Nexus about the $6,600 PC that was a complete cluster of a PC. So we really let this one simmer for a while to make sure that there was gonna be follow up with that and see how Origin responded. Because I've said this a million times, it's not about when companies have a problem. What was the problem? It's how did they handle the problem? So uh, I think there was a lot of um, trust issues people had in the market when it comes to Origin. And I know that they've made statements and worked with Steve to resolve. Uh, so today we're going to kind of take a look and see how did this one turn out, if you will. Admittedly, this one should be perfect. And I say that because of the fact that they knew they were sending it to us. Whereas in Steve's build, that, that they bought it as a customer through a different name and credit card. So they didn't uh, necessarily know who it was going to. So it's like putting your best foot forward when you're sending something to an influencer, right? Um, but anyway, we were very vocal in that, hey, we're not gonna be touching any of your stuff for a while till we see how things uh, turn out. So anyway, I guess it's time to figure it out. This is their crating service here, and you guys have seen this a million times. I'd like to point out there's now a QR code on the outside of the crate that shows you how to open it. Because for the first three or four crates we've received over like the last four years, the instructions on how to open the crate were in the crate. That's not great. Get it? At least now they use like Phillips head screws and stuff where in the first, first few packages didn't, they just had the big ass staple screws that had to like pry open. You guys remember that? One unboxing where I literally like He-Man ripped it apart. Ah, ah, everything is pokey. <laughs> Easy. The nice thing about the crates obviously is this is going to definitely help keep your PC from getting damaged, theoretically. I don't know why I expected something else to be sh I've opened enough of these. I don't know why I've expected something pretty to be facing me. The box is still dry, so that's a good sign. Although I might have to add the fluid myself. A lot of water-cooled PCs come empty for shipping reasons. And then you have to add the uh, coolant in there on your own. But it's always packed very well, especially because it has to survive. In this case, it came uh, FedEx, but which I'm glad about because our last couple of UPS shipments have gotten lost. I remember when I made the underwear out of these? <laughs> Every time I do these, I feel like they're underwear. <laughs> X, X marks the spot. They definitely are J-sized underwear, I tell you what. It's interesting. So this is one of the features of uh, Origin is that you can get your case kind of custom UV printed like this. I'm really interested to take a look at this loop because let me tell you, I had some critiques for them in the past on some of their, their tubing runs. A lot of them were not straight or they not, were not parallel or they just kind of went different directions. And I was like, dude, for the premium you're paying for these computers, they should be pretty damn near perfect. Holy, we heard you like tube. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I was, I was not expecting that. Okay, they're just showing off now. They're like, <clears throat> you were saying? This is very unique. But uh, anyway, that you can see the GPU is nice and supported in here. Once we get out all the supporting foam for the GPU, this is clearly a 40 series because of the fact that it, this has the sideband connector on there. Um, it's got a bit of a bend on there, but it's not too tight on here. But these are custom sleeved cables. Wish I knew what terminals and stuff that they were using. I also don't know if this is a 4080 or a 4090, but it's clearly gonna be one of those. It's gonna be a Founders Edition card because of the fact that it's so small. So I started to talk about the front right here. That's actually this thing. We had one in stock. In stock, I'm not stored, but I had, <laughs> I had one in my shelf. That's the XD7, the RGB um, distribution plate. 
where it looks like the fans and it had the same RGB fan rings as the fans, only it has a pump in the bottom. So here it is right here. We've got a drain right here facing you, which is very nice. My goodness, I can't even make sense of the order of this run. I don't know <laughs> where it's going. So it's obviously an Intel. I could tell that by looking at the bracket on the pump, but here's the little cover for the motherboard. Here's our SSD expansion card, which we could still fit in there if we needed to. This allows us to add more. This one's all scratched up. Look at what is, look at this. Oh, jeez. Okay, I'd be pissed. Part of me wonders, yeah, see there's scratches on here. This is, this is what happened in shipping. So Origin sent this just flopping in here like that, and then all the shipping. I'd be a little pissed, look at that. That's like right on the leading edge. All right, so there's strike one for Origin right there. That's sucky. Anyway, here's our, there's our AMD bracket, <sighs> extra screws and things. This is gonna be uh, our motherboard driver disc right there. Jumper cable, here's our power plug, fill tube. Uh, where would we fill this guy though? I guess we'd be able to theoretically turn it upside down to fill it. Well, let's look at the backside. One of my previous complaints about Origin is gonna sound very odd, is that their cable management was too good. And by that, I mean things were pulled super tight. So trying to access something if you needed to move a cable or whatever was very difficult. It doesn't look too bad though, but a SATA drive, that's unique these days. So we have a SATA drive, room for two more. Here's our controller hub, the built-in hub on the case. There's, you're gonna be hard pressed to find any other brand that puts anywhere near the amount of effort into their cable management that Origin does. My builds never look like this. I don't have time, ain't nobody got time for that. Apparently they do. So this is a 360 rad on the front. And then we also have a 360 exhaust rad on the top. So that should be plenty for theoretically a 13 series GPU in a 4080 slash 4090. Again, I don't know exactly what the specs are on this guy. Okay, so already Aura's Aura-ing. It's RGB puke there. Ooh, I like the how the backlights. I like how there's a couple bubbles too, so we can actually see the flow order now. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the backlighting, the white going through the tubes looks really cool. I like that. But because we have the, the lighting on the front reservoir, that matches the rings found on the fans, you can see on the front side of the case, um, it just matches everything without looking like it's you know different. Uh, also too, it does say it's an RTX 4090 right on the GPU. So obviously it's gonna perform like a water-cooled 4090. Let me get these updates done. There's been some updates since we received this and then um, let me get uh, some stressors, some stress tests installed on here so we can see what the CPU temps look like as well as the GPU temps. But I guess I can first tell you what the specs are. All right, so we have got for a CPU a 13900K, no surprise there. Probably need to install XTU and do a little undervolting because that's how I like to do. 32 gigabytes of uh, 6,000 megahertz RAM. Uh, obviously it's um, Dominator Platinum, which the Capellix LEDs. Our SSD is a two terabyte. Uh, so the main NVMe is a two terabyte. The, we also have a two terabyte, which is the uh, SSD on the back, the SATA SSD and we have our 4090, which is just an NVIDIA Founders Edition card idling at 27C. It's kind of ironic, as soon as we stopped that clip, the uh, IQ finally loaded, and this is the color setup that they had going. I liked the static white <laughs> more perfect, honestly, because the red from the tubing, or the coolant was plenty of red for me, in my opinion. Ironically, um, our company colors have changed from red and white to Vaporwave, so technically it doesn't match our theme anymore, but that's okay. We, we, it's our vintage J, just like me. Well, it took a solid 15 minutes or more to install. I don't understand why Armory Crate takes so long to install. It is one of the worst pieces of software in my opinion, but it's Asus, so what do I expect? And that's just so that I can get the motherboard to stop doing that, because for whatever reason, the third-party plugin for Corsair's IQ refuses to see the motherboard. I used to wonder why the audience seems so jaded. And I get it now. Not enough of this shit. Oh, it's still going!
All right, so Aura is finally installed. And one of the reasons why I installed this is I wanted to see what their cooling configuration setup was. Uh, first things first, all the fans are set to exhaust, which means this is a purely negative pressure system. Now, although that's not inherently terrible, it does mean that you can have dust buildup because it can pull in air through all cracks and crevices, including ones like back here that are not filtered in any way. Those three fans in the back are set to exhaust, and I think that's so that you don't see the X of the hub. Uh, and the three on the top are set to exhaust. So what that means is all, all air supplied to this chassis is gonna be coming in through uh, pretty much, to be honest, what little is on the bottom and right here in the back because the front is mostly blocked off by the reservoir. So I'm gonna be curious to see how temperature testing goes because that's what we're gonna be doing here in a moment. Um, one thing I wanna point out is we did actually update the BIOS in this. We've had this computer for a while now. And like I've already mentioned, we waited to kind of see what was happening with the whole Steve fiasco with the system they bought. So we needed to make sure we had some confidence in Origin moving forward uh, before we even took a look at this one. So because it's an ASUS motherboard, and you know how I feel about a lot of the ASUS BIOS stuff, I chose to make sure that the ASUS BIOS was updated. So we're running 1209 right now, um, which is probably a good thing because one of the things that we noticed is one of the older versions of the BIOS was limiting our CPU to 230 watts. Um, so that's not an issue with this system. I just wanted to point that out. It, Keep an eye on your BIOS in your system, whether it's a pre-built or your current system, because sometimes there might be something you never even knew was a thing until you look at the release notes and realize like, hey, this BIOS is fixing a problem. But uh, anyway, moving on, let's start with Cinebench because Cinebench is a very uh, stress-inducing test that can push our CPU uh, to the limits. And uh, yes, there are tests. Apparently there's a chess game out there that like, it's like a benchmark with a ch chest, chess algorithm, I guess. I don't know. It's crazy. Someone's told me that you thought Cinebench was bad. You should see this chess algorithm. But anyway, I guess if it has to calculate a lot of possibilities at the same time, that, that could do it. Remember, all this is is math. So anyway, moving on, let's take a look at our frequencies and such. So we do have XMP enabled, um, and we're going to be checking to see what our max voltages are and our max temperatures are going to be. So let's go ahead and get this kind of ready to go here. Here's our package temperature right here. Um, P core, E core temps individually. We'll set, push those out. We should see about 253 watts under load on the CPU. That is the Intel spec. That is the way the, sh the system ships. With this amount of cooling, you could certainly push it up and I would highly recommend doing that. I think Origin even has an overclocking service that you can purchase or, or talk to them about. Um, but when you got this level of cooling, I would absolutely be shocked if you were just going to leave them at stock settings. But with that said, stock settings can bring some coolers to their knees with the 13900K. So let's see where we're landing here, shall we? A multi-core. Our cores went to 5.2 gigahertz all core. And our temperatures, as you can see, the package is at 78, 79. Our P cores are in the upper 70s to low 70s. And our E cores are in the 60s. A couple of them hit 70, which isn't bad. But our max temp right now just hit ADC on the package, we got a 37,192. That is exactly in line with a stock 13900K out of the box. Now we've already done an XTU video, by the way, shameless plug to go and check out our um, how to stop your 13900K or how to stop your CPU from melting video because we show how to undervolt and maintain performance levels for better temperatures. Um, that's, I mean, this is all performing exactly as where I would expect it to be. Let's take a look now at, uh, oh, and by the way, because it's hooked up to the motherboard, when the CPU sees PWM, uh, or when the CPU sees load, the PWM, the pulse width modulation built into it will ramp the fans up. The fans are not connected to IQ, which I think is very odd, considering the fact that one of the things Corsair is all big on with IQ, and remember, Origin PC is a company under Corsair, that um, I would think they would want their IQ controlling their fans. And there's a big reason for that. If we move on to our um, GPU test, because the fans are not connected to IQ, IQ can see what the GPU temperatures are. And you can also set a fan curve based on GPU temperatures. So if the GPU, which admittedly a 4090 in here is gonna put a lot of heat into the loop, 415 watts is what this GPU is gonna dump into the loop. This is a Founders Edition card. That's a lot of heat going into, this, into the radiators, way more than the CPU. So IQ would be able to ramp up the fans based on GPU load, but the motherboard doesn't because the motherboard does not communicate with the GPU temperatures. So right now when we start our test, 
the fans are going to just stay at their more idle state, which is a much lower RPM, which means less transfer through the radiators, which means less cooling. So that's a downside. I feel like those absolutely positively should have been connected to IQ. Um, but I also need to put the side panel on because one of the things I'm going to do right now is let it loop for a little bit on the GPU test so that we can see what our temperatures get up to. Need to put the side panel on just so that I can have some ammunition to say, hey, Origin, those should have been intake fans and not exhaust. And before anyone at Origin says, we only do exhaust fans back there, um, here's a system you sent us a while back that has them clearly set as intakes. So having intake fans is important when you got the XD7 blocking off the front airflow because you could still have fans on the front bringing air in or at least just vents to pull the air through. Anyway, enough said, let's put the side panel on and see what our temps uh, max out at on the GPU. So I'm using hardware monitor by CPU ID to monitor temps and the, this is one specific reason. Hotspot temp is reported. One of the things we're looking for here is obviously they've added this block to the uh, GPU. And if for some reason the thermal paste didn't spread entirely or cover every square millimeter of the die, the portions of the die that are not touching or being touched by thermal paste will report hot. So the hot spot could be really high, but your average temp could be normal or your edge temp could be normal. And the only way you would notice that is by having your, uh, reg like the, it would look like normal temperatures reported in MSI Afterburner, but then you would notice your clock speeds dropping, so. Initially, it ramped up to 48C, hotspots at 55, but the fans are not speeding up, as I've already said. So I feel like if the fans were speeding up, that would work really well. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna let it sort of equalize, figure out where the temperatures land, show you, then I'm gonna put the fan speeds up higher uh, in or or Armory Crate in Fan Expert, so that we can see if by speeding up the fans, at least in exhaust, would this have increased or decreased our temps, which I think physics say yes, but we have to show it. So our GPU uh, temperature is 61, 62, and our hotspot is 71.2. It's maxed out at 72.5 and 62. So pretty close to air-cooled temperatures if you want to know the truth. And the reason for that, again, the fans are not ramping up under the GPU load. Because look, we've got 400 watts, 388.6. It maxed out at two, or 410 for a minute there, but we've got almost 400 watts worth of power plus 7.18 so a total of just about 400 watts going into the loop so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to load up armory crate uh and i'm going to and i hate the fact that i have to use armory crate we've already talked about this though and i'm going to turn up the fans i just want to see now if by ramping up our airflow and i can feel the air being sucked in the back right here if we ramp up the airflow and the speed of the fans will this help and the answer should be pretty obviously yes Okay, so here's what we've got. We came down to 54C, it just hit 55 for a second, but 54C from 62 and from 72.5 down to 63.8. That's just by turning the fans up and that's with the side panel on. And what's funny is with the fans at 100%, I did move them to 100% by the way, not the curve, because I was like, I want to see what the best case scenario would be. It's not that loud. So it just kind of stinks though, because the fans don't have any way of monitoring the GPU temps to ramp themselves up. You would then have to set up something like um, fan control software, which we've done video about as well. A lot of shameless plugs in this particular video. So you could do it through that particular software. Um, but anyway, it is uh, conclusion time here. And you know, I'm a channel that definitely advocates build, your, build it yourself, you know? and. A lot of people are just not comfortable with building it themselves. I feel like my, I do the best job I can to get people to believe that they can build these types of systems. But fortunately, there are options out there like Origin PC to build these systems for you if you just are not comfortable with taking on the endeavor of <laughs> this complicated intestinal type system uh, on your own. And like I also said at the beginning of this video, I really wanted to just sort of sit and wait and kind of let the whole, what happened with Steve's computer sort of percolate before I decided if I wanted to go forward with this. And I fully believe that Origin uh, has made moves to try and make right some of the process breakdowns that led to the issues that Steve had. So we've had this computer for a while now, quite a few months. So it, I finally felt comfortable with, hey, let's go ahead and go forward with this video. Let's see how it turned out. 
with this particular build. But one of the major differences here is they knew they were sending it to us. So I would expect them to put their best foot forward, but I would expect any brand to put their best foot forward for any customer, any customer spending anywhere from modest money to $1,200, $1,500 PCs, because they do have regular computers that are ready to go off the shelf and not these custom water-cooled Hydro PCs, Hydro X PCs. Um, I would expect every single build to be built with that same level of care. Uh, and it's a growing pain, I think, sometimes. As companies grow, some things get missed and there's some processes that have to change and sometimes it takes negative backlash for things to change. And it's not if a company has a problem, it's how they handle those problems that determine whether or not you should have trust uh, in that particular brand. So build quality wise, I have very little to say negative about it. I mean, there's a lot of little things in the bends that are more for fun, I think, when the builders were putting it together, like these little kinks and stuff. But there's no 90 degree fittings anywhere in here. They opted to do all bends. And on, in terms of a difficulty level, I would call this like a 9.5 out of 10 on difficulty for this kind of tubing run. Anytime you make a bend, having it end up in a very specific spot you need it to be in later is very difficult. Um, this is not an easy system. In fact, there's 145 like coming up off the radiator right there just to get this angle to clear the IO part of the, the motherboard. But if you're interested in having a computer like this and you're just not comfortable building it, these options do exist. So anyway, once again, thanks to Origin PC for sending it to us to take a look at um, and trusting our opinion. I think as we lean on brands when things go wrong, like for instance, the scratched up SSD thing really bothers me because if I wanted to put that in there, now I'd have that scratched edge. I'd have to sharpie it or something to get it out. And that's just because of the fact that it got jostled around in transit and they had that fill tube, which I already showed you that had the fitting on the end of it, scratching against it. And that's a knurled fitting. So it's like a sandpaper bit, if you will. Um, I do appreciate that they didn't do a vertical mount on the GPU because had they done that, then we'd lose access to all the other PCI Express slots, which would make that expansion card that I'm nitpicking about right now, completely inaccessible and impossible to install. But it's a top of the line system, a 13900K, an RTX 4090, water cooled, a Z790 ROG motherboard. It's a premium build. And I don't think it's unreasonable to expect perfection out of that. I still feel like all exhaust fans are a bad idea. If I were building this, I would have those three fans as intakes. The XD7 is blocking off most of the front intake. Even though there's no fans in the front, having these fans be able to pull fresh air right from this vent would be better than it having to come from all the way back here or any cracks and crevices around the, the side of the XD7 or the back. So I also took the fan filter out of the rear panel. They had the fan filter. You don't need to filter the exhaust. You filter the intake. So this just reduced airflow even more. So this should have been taken out if you're insisting on running exhaust. And I, and I called them out on that. And they basically said, no, all exhaust is how we do it. And I'm like, okay, well, you're doing it wrong. As far as I'm concerned, um, we can agree to disagree on that. And I don't think either of us are going to change our stance on that. But at least take the filter out. You don't need this shit if you're exhausting it. So why are you reducing the airflow even more? So if you thought about it well enough to say we did all of our testing, why didn't you take the filter out? That's more of a personal rant. The person watching this video right now knows who I'm talking to. So anyway, moving on. It's a beautiful build. Um, it performs well. Just a couple little things. You know, the fans should have been hooked up to IQ. That way they can ramp up with GPU temp and we can set curves for all that sort of stuff. Um, but you know, I think people who buy these systems should also know how to tinker with them and set up things and set up settings and all that. So maybe I need to do the all-inclusive how to get your pre-built PC up and running, I guess. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Link is down below. You guys can follow to Origin PC, kind of price out some builds if you guys want to get an idea of what it would cost. Everything from mild air-cooled PCs all the way up to stuff like this. All right, guys, thanks for watching. As always, sound off down below. Do you, are you gonna trust Origin? Are you willing to take that risk? I know I make it sound like a big risk. I don't think it's that big of a risk, but brand image is everything. And they're coming off the heels of a big one, a big problem. So the question is, as a consumer, where are you at? Sound off down below. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.